Well, good evening, everyone, or good morning, depending where you are joining us from. Welcome here to the launch pad and our live launch coverage of tonight's Ariane Space Vega rocket launching from the French Guiana. We're currently sitting at T minus 37 minutes and counting towards tonight's launch of three military satellites for the French armed forces. Total mission time expected 56 minutes, 44 seconds between liftoff and payload deployment. Unsure if we'll see payload deployment live due to these being for the military, but currently T0 scheduled for 427 a.m. Eastern or 927 a.m. UTC. But as always, as we get started, take a moment, let us know in the chat where you're watching from. If it's your first time here, welcome to the Launchpad. My name's Zach. I'm the host here at the Launchpad. It's our mission to inform and inspire the explorers of tomorrow because we believe space is better together we invite you to be active in the chat tonight subscribe join the discord and we'd love to connect with you guys we're going to pull up a, a live view here uh, of the rocket as they do have their live cameras uh, up and running here for tonight they do have their countdown on the screen for when they'll begin their live commentary but uh, it does give us a current live view of the rocket out on the pad so we're going to patch that in here as well Currently t passing through T-minus 36 minutes and counting. Lots of people joining in. We got Drex from Alberta, Tamara's in SoCal, Louise in Florida. Great to have you all here tonight. I know it's a, a late one for some of us. It's uh, 2 a.m. here, but uh, or an early one for many. Uh, and if you're over in Europe, uh, it's actually a nice time for a launch for you guys tonight. But uh, if you're just joining us, welcome to our live launch coverage of tonight's Arion Space Vega rocket with the uh, Sears or Ceres uh, mission. Uh, we'll hear how they pronounce it here in the moment. This is the uh, 12th Arion Space mission of 2021, the third Vega launch of this year, and the 113th orbital launch attempt of 2021. That number very quickly climbing here in the last couple of months. Again, it's for the CNES on behalf of the French Ministry of the armed forces launching from launch complex elv1 from the french guiana guiana space center tonight's payload weighing 1548 kilograms and will be launching into a low earth orbit at a 75 degree inclination the vega rocket is not reusable so it is all brand new with new fairings and the remains of it will crash into the atlantic ocean if you guys have questions, as always, you can send those in the chat. Just tag us at the launch pad. That make sure that I see those questions as they come in and I'm able to answer them. The CERES is a French reconnaissance satellite mission, which consists of three satellites that fly in formation in low Earth orbit. Uh, once in orbit, it'll be the first operational space, space intelligence system in Europe. This mission will be conducted by the DGA or the Directorate General of Armaments and will be supported by the French Space Agency. The two primary contractors were Airbus and Talus Defense Mission in the development of these satellites with Ariane Space as the launch provider. Tonight's rocket is a 98 foot or 30 meter tall uh, with a diameter of 3 meters or 10 feet. It has, a three, it has three solid motor stages uh, topped by a liquid propellant fourth stage. The first Vega rocket launched in 2012. They've had two failures in their history, once in 2019 and another in 2020. So not a uh, perfectly flight-proven rocket, a little bit of history there. To give you an idea of scale, tonight's Vega rocket is a similar height to one of the SRBs that go on the Ariane 5. So uh, it is a very small rocket launching here this evening. Lots of people joining in the chat. Great to have you all here. Carl's from Wales. We got New Apollo in Eastern Europe. Great to have you. Andrew's in Perth. Got the real YouTubes in Texas. No, not sunshine yet, still dark out. Great to have you all here. Uh, today's mission will be launching, as we said, into a low Earth orbit, into a sun synchronous uh, orbit. And that's for the uh, three of those satellites. Giving an idea of rundown of today's launch sequence. Following liftoff, we'll have first stage separation at T plus 1 minute 56 seconds. Second stage separation, T plus 3 minutes 39 seconds. 
bearing separation just a little bit later at 3 minutes 57 seconds. Third stage will separate, T plus 6 minutes 30 seconds. And then we'll see that back, uh, that liquid uh, fourth stage have its first ignition about a minute later. Uh, and then 50 minutes, uh, for about 45 minutes later, excuse me, we will see a second ignition of that fourth stage uh, followed by the separation of the satellites. Uh, fall, and that will be followed by a third ignition of that fourth stage to uh, deorbit it uh, and not leave trash. A big topic of the day, uh, trash in space. Russia having shot down uh, a previous Soviet satellite, creating a major debris field. We are still monitoring for any updates from NASA or Russia. NASA and Russia have neither fully released a statement, but the NASA administrator did say that uh, they uh, this is not acceptable uh, it is a, a major issue, uh, and this debris will now likely be in orbit. Uh, the first numbers are saying debris will be in orbit until at least 2040, uh, so this is something that we'll have to live with for quite a while. But uh, we're here for a launch, and we're excited to have another Ariane Space launch uh, on the docket. Also, just to give you an idea of what you have coming up in the next month, we've got multiple Falcon 9s, we've got multiple Electron launches, we maybe have an Astra launch. We've got a Soyuz launching a new Russian module. We also have a Launcher 1 launch and an Atlas V. So lots of things coming up. Make sure you've engaged that subscribe button. You never miss any of those launches or any of the breaking news like today's International Space Station event. In about two minutes here, we expect, or three minutes here, we expect uh, them to go live with their full coverage from Ariane Space. So we'll get an update on how the uh, communications are going with the rocket, how the rocket's uh, sitting, how the ground's sitting, uh, and if everything's green on that board. Ariane Space is really great where they actually live broadcast at times their current go, no go board. So we'll have a good update uh, for that. Uh, currently sitting though, T minus 30 minutes, 10 seconds. If you guys have questions take a moment let us know in the chat we'll be answering those live as the evening goes on uh, because uh, we'll be ha uh, have a little bit of time from launch through payload deployment yeah 2040 it is a long time uh, that they'll have debris in orbit unfortunately the first debris uh, will expected to start uh, entering Earth's atmosphere in the next coming days uh, but it will uh, slowly increase. Uh, by the end of 2024, they expect there to be about 400 pieces of debris a year re-entering. By 2028, uh, si over 600. Uh, and by the end of this decade, they believe we'll have eight to 900 pieces of debris from this one satellite entering each year. Uh, and they expect it to stay between eight and 900 all the way through 2040. So we don't have an end date just yet, but uh, it will be definitely in orbit uh, for a while, it's definitely something they're going to have to monitor with the International Space Station uh, to make sure uh, they know how to handle it. And maybe by then we'll have some sort of way of cleaning up some of this debris. The biggest issue isn't the debris we can track. There's over 1,500 pieces of debris that are trackable. The issue is the hundreds of thousands of pieces of debris that are not trackable. That you're talking that are super tiny, like nuts, bolts, uh, even just tiny pieces of uh, shrapnel. Uh, that can actually cause more issues than the larger debris. We did hear also that the debris field right now is covering about 80 kilometers uh, in altitude between 460 and 520 kilometers. But that's just based off of first reports. So we are expected to eventually get some more information as time goes on. Thanks, photo. I appreciate it. Nice source of shooting stars. I mean, that's one positive I guess we could take from it. We'll have some nice shooting stars for the next 40 years. Uh, absolutely. We're going to patch in here, take a listen to Arion Space, and have some updates as they begin their full live coverage of tonight's Vega Rocket. Continue sending in those questions about the launch. We'll answer those as we go. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. It helps us out and take a moment and share out the broadcast and let people know that we are ready for 
launch at t less than 30 minutes until launch. Good morning and thank you for being with us on Road to Space. We are going live on the 20th mission of the Vega launcher. In 30 minutes, the European spacecraft will take off with three Terra satellites on board. That's the first European electromagnetic intelligence space space system. A pack. It's packed with high-end technologies and it's been developed by CNES for the General Directorate of Armament. But before that, let's take a look at the agenda. So today in Road to Space, an outstanding lift off the Vega flight, uh, Flight 20, that will take off in a few minutes from the European Space Center in Kourou. So we're live in Kourou, but also in Paris with our experts. With them, we will decide for takeoff, and you will learn more about the passengers on board the launcher. Three satellites. Yes, we have three satellites that will fly on two different orbital planes to design a triangle geometry. Ceres is the only electromagnetic signal uh, intelligence system, a revolution uh, for our armed forces, 20 years of research between CNES and the Ministry of the Armed Forces. A launch is always a moment full of emotions for the team. In our live show, new reports on how these satellites were designed and also information about the ground segment. This is the special room for the satellite. Welcome to Road to Space, the show where the present is connected to the future. So today in Road to Space, we have reports for you, but also experts with three uh, guests on our set. Samuel Rogers, you are uh, with us, your specialist uh, Vega for Aryan Space. You are going to help us decipher the features and the challenges of this mission. And then later, we will have uh, Hervé Grandjean, speak, uh, spokesperson for the Ministry of the, of defense and Philip Steininger, the defense uh, advisor for CNES. But right now, let's uh, see where the, what they're doing in Kourou. We have all the teams from Iron Space, CNES, DGA, Airbus, Defense and Space, and the European State Space Agency. They're red, getting ready for liftoff. But we are going to be able to talk to Stefan Israel. Hello, Stefan. Welcome to Road to Space. Good morning. Thank you for being with us. It's very early in Kourou. It's um, not 6 o'clock a.m. I see all the teams ready in the Jupiter room. Uh, can you t give us some information about this launch that we're all waiting for? Yeah. So this is a very important launch. The CERES uh, program includes three satellites, as we just said. It's a program that we operate for the Ministry of Defense, along with the General Directorate for Armament. So it's a sovereign program, and it combines Airbus, Defense, and Spain with, with Thales and Thales Alenia space. So it's a French team that came together for a strategic program. So very important passengers, very important partners. You know them well. Can you tell us a bit more about today's flight? Yeah, it's a bit more than 6 o'clock a.m. in Guyana. At 6.27, our light launcher, Vega, is going to lift off. This mission is going to last 56 minutes and 44 seconds. It's uh, uh, to, to the north. We have the first uh, stages that will uh, separate, and then we'll have the Avum that will have two boosts. And, and at 700 kilometers in altitude, after 56 minutes and 44 seconds, we'll have the jettisoning of the satellite. It's not my first launch, and each time, whether for you or for us, it's always a great uh, source of satisfaction. But this flight is a bit special, isn't it? Yes. Uh, it's a lot of satisfaction, a lot of concentration. And it's uh, full of round figures tonight. It's flight 20, and it's the 300th flight launched from the Kourou in French Guiana. 
from all our family of launches, Ariane, Soyuz, and now Vega. So that's the 20th Vega flight and the 300th flight from Kourou. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Stefan. We give you time to focus, and we'll get back to you a bit later. So, of course, we'll be in touch with Kourou all along this uh, flight so that we can follow every single step of the launch, lift off at 10, 27, 55 seconds to be very accurate, and we see that all the teams are very focused in Jupiter. Samuel Rogers, you are the Vega specialist for Aryan space. You're very familiar with the place. You went there. So what? Well, it's always very emotional, you know. I uh, usually take part to launches in the bunker, so that's the location that's the closest to the launch pad. So you're not in the Jupiter room. No, there are many teams. Some of them are in the Jupiter room. I was in the bunker, in the launch uh, bunker, so we are very near but we are sheltered underground and we feel everything related to the uh, launch, so that's uh, great. Okay, what do you feel when you get there? There is a combination of many different emotions. There is some level of stress because we do realize that it's a beautiful human and technical endeavor that brings us to the launch pad. So we can't afford to neglect any detail. So there is a lot of stress and a lot of pressure. But there is also very high concentration. Everybody knows exactly what they have to do. So everybody is very much focused and very much involved. And as Stefan said, there is also great joy when we see that this is, well, the end of several weeks or months of work for all the persons involved in such uh, takeoff. Okay, so before we take part in this uh, li live takeoff, we are back in Kourou with Marino Fragnito. Are you with us, Marino? Yes, I am with you. Hello, Marino. You are director of the Vega business unit at Ariant Space. But this is a non-traditional, non-typical mission. Why? Well, this is a mission on which we've worked for many, many years. As uh, Stefan just said, it was very much teamwork coordinated by Ariant Space, but also involving CNES, DGA, Airbus, Airbus Spain, that helped us build the uh, jettisoning system for the satellites. We worked together for many years. We carried out many verifications during the development phase because we have a jettisoning system, which we call a CLIP, and that's very specific for Ceres. And we also worked uh, in the avionics that were developed specifically for this mission. So we have a very narrow uh, separation margins for the satellite, so we had to check that very accurately during the development phase. That was very accurate work for all our teams, and we're all there very focused for the success of this mission tonight. Okay, so it's highly technical. How can you prepare for such a technical mission? What's different? Well, as I said, the system is um, to uh, jettison the satellite is uh, optimized. Um, I will tell you more about the mission during the show, but we have a network of uh, telemetry stations, which is not the standard uh, uh, network. We have a boat that will acquire telemetry data along the path of the uh, launch of the launcher. So we've uh, uh, accumulated various uh, requirements that were complied with through the setting of non-standard systems, and all this required huge efforts on behalf of our in space and of our teams. Well, thank you very much, Marino. We'll be back with Samuel. Uh, we're back with Samuel to talk about all this. We talked about a boat. We talked about. Uh, a sea-based telemetry station. So this is an outstanding mission for all the teams. You're our expert uh, tonight. Can you tell us uh, the specificities of this flight? It won't follow the same trajectory. We have an animation. Can you comment this? 
and I learn a lot. So we should have a video animation and you'll be able to make comments on every single face. Yeah. So it's going to be a launch from the uh, Guyana Space Center. It will be triggered with the ignition of the P-80. That's the first uh, propulsion stage of the Vega launcher. It will push for 10 minutes and then there will be a separation order and the stage will be separated. And then uh, the launcher will be uh, pushed by the second stage called the Z-23 and it will uh, burn and then be separated. And then the Zephyro 9 will be in charge of pushing the launcher. This is what we see now on, on the screen. Zephyro 9 will work for a bit more than two minutes. And during this phase, this is where when we jettisoned the fairing that protected the three satellites when the launcher was going through the atmosphere. And that's when we have acquisition by the boat-based telemetry station that Marino just talked about. Yes, we'll talk about this some more later. Okay. And with this boat base station, we will know in real time about all the events that will come afterwards. So I'm talking about the separation of the third stage, the Zephyro 9, as you can see. That's a slightly specific maneuver to separate this stage. And then the first ignition of the upper stage, the Avum, that's a very special um, uh, stage because it works with uh, uh, liquid propellants. And then we'll have a ballistic phase that will take us above Australia. That's when the Avon will be ignited for the second time, then it will be extinguished, and that's when we'll have the jettisoning of the three Ceres satellite. As Marino said, it's a bit specific because we have to release or jettison the three satellites at the same time. And all this will last 50 minutes, roughly. And then we have a last ballistic phase that will take us above Canada, and that's when we will have a last ignition of the Avum to decrease the altitude of the remaining part of the launcher and finish the uh, VV-20 mission. Thank you very much for all this explanation. We will see that live in a minute, and we are connected with Kuhu, and we will remain connected to all the very precious information that you will hear from Pépin Antoine Guillaume, the uh, operations director known as the DDO. And I'm delighted to hear that this DDO was Pépin Antoine Guillaume. And in a few minutes, he is going to announce the final countdown. But behind me, we have this green board. Can we say a few words about this green board, Samuel? We all keep an eye on it, don't we? Yes, we can say a few words about this. This board shows the status of every subsystem required for a successful launch. So here, everything is green. So that's very good news. It's a bit like for traffic lights. When it's green, you can go. When it's red, you have to stop. So we all agree if there was one line that was to move to red, we would stop uh, the final countdown. Yes, absolutely. So at the bottom, we see weather. Is it important? Yes, we have four categories of information that we need for the launch. So at the top left, you have everything related to the base. Bottom left, this is the connection with the launcher, telemetry, geolocation, etc. Then, bottom, top right, it's everything relating to the passengers. And bottom right, you have the weather. And of course, we do monitor all kind of weather-related risks like thunder, lightnings, etc. So everything's green. We had the latest weather forecast a few minutes ago. OK. so. We took a look at this uh, board, but before we reached the green light, we had the whole campaign, and we have a video that shows that everything starts on water. Absolutely. And if you're just joining us, welcome here to our live launch coverage of tonight's Vega rocket launch from the Guiana Space Center in French Guiana. We're currently sitting at T-minus 13 minutes and counting until liftoff and everything of the rocket and the range 
is green, the ESA going through. A little bit of history of uh, Vega getting its payload and getting ready for tonight's launch. Tonight's launch is in uh, supporting the uh, French military launching three satellites, the first of their type uh, in Europe, creating a uh, space signal intelligence capability uh, over a part of Europe. Uh, the first of these, th the three satellites launching together uh, tonight, creating uh, this uh, first of its kind reconnaissance satellite uh, system for the French military uh, launching into a low Earth orbit. Uh, at an inclination of 75 degrees, tonight's payload's weighing 1,548 kil uh, kilograms. Glad to have you all here. Take a moment, hit that like, subscribe button, and share out the broadcast, letting people know we are coming up to launch. And as always, we'll be answering your guys' questions live in the chat. You can tag us at the launch pad, and we'll be able to answer those live for you here tonight. The Vega rocket is not a reusable rocket, so it will be crashing into the Atlantic Ocean uh, as the evening progresses through uh, the launch sequence. Uh, total mission time, just over 56 minutes uh, from liftoff through payload deployment. Uh, we're still unsure if we'll have payload deployment coverage or not, uh, as this is a military payload. But based on how much they've been talking about, uh, it seems like we will. The uh, target orbit, 7,048 kilometers, but uh, payload separation will be about uh, at 700 kilometers here this evening. As we said, this is the third Vega launch of this year and the 12th Ariane space launch of 2021, bringing up the total to 113 launches so far in this year. We're going to take a listen back in here for any updates on the state of the rocket as we count down T minus 11 minutes and counting. Uh, commenting the video, we have Hervé Grandjean, spokesperson for the Ministry of Defense. Hello, hello. And alongside with you, Philip Steininger, uh, defense uh, advisor to CNES CEO. Thank you, gentlemen, for being with us. Now, together, we are going to try and understand the issues and challenges of today's mission. I'll start with you, Philip Stenninger. You work at CNES. You are the uh, military advisor of its CEO. What are the links between the space and defense sectors? Well, first, there is a very strong historical link. And today, we can only uh, see that there are two facts, uh, space programs and activities, or at least most of them have a dual applications, both civil and military applications, and also the defense of our societies today comes from the space, and the space cannot not be defended either. So uh, I could say that there is no defense without space, but no space without defense nowadays. And of course, Hervé Grandjean, I'm going to also ask you to tell us more about the use of these satellites in the future field of defense, uh, what is going to be their use? Well, satellites are absolutely necessary to carry out military operations. Let me give you an example. In April 2018, we launched an operation to strike the chemical plants used by Ashar el-Assad. To do such a mission, you need, in advance, intelligence pictures of the precise locations of these uh, plants. And that's why we use military observation satellites to obtain these pictures. And when you start the air attack with uh, jet fighters that take off from the Saint-Dizier air base. You have a constant radio connection with the pilots thanks to military telecommunication satellites, the Syracuse satellites. And once the missiles are launched, they are guided by geocommunication satellites. So you see that you cannot carry out a big military operation nowadays without uh, this uh, capability. So it's important to use what's above our heads. Now, let's immediately watch a video in which we're going to explain to you how the intelligence capabilities of the armed forces in the field depend upon the satellites. France has uh, launched into the uh, space conquest from the beginning of the 60s. Since then, military space programs are a national priority for observation, telecommunications, and many technologies have been born thanks to the industrial and technological efforts supported by the Ministry of the Armed Forces. The new uh, space uh, strategy for defense is increasing these capabilities and enables France to have some of the best uh, space assets in the world. Now, 
there are uh, systems in Europe that detect from uh, the space, CERES, uh, to have the uh, capability for uh, space-based electronic signals intelligence program. It complements other existing sensors. So CERES uh, uh, is about 700 kilometers high to access areas that are not accessible by other land-based uh, conventional sensors. You have a better knowledge of the enemy operational capability and also the possibility to uh, develop electromagnetic uh, countermeasures. If you know the enemy radars, you can optimize the trajectory of the air attacks. And these capabilities are implemented by the High uh, uh, Space Command under the authority of the Joint Chief of Staff to conduct military operations, which is at the core of French defense. CRS is a constellation of three military satellites rotating around the Earth at about 700 kilometers that can collect data everywhere in the world in a, a very populated area or not. Uh, radars uh, transmit electromagnetic signals that are picked up by CRS satellites and they are used to produce intelligence. It is the simultaneous use of the three satellites information that makes it possible to locate the transmitter. When a radar transmits a signal, the three satellites don't get it at the same time, but with a slight gap. And it's by cross-checking the data collected by the three satellites that it's possible to accurately locate the transmitter. The data, once they are analyzed, can provide the technical characteristics of the radar. This precious information is used by the Demeter information system. system that provides sophisticated intelligence to really identify uh, the uh, transmitter. CRS is an incredible technological adventure. It is DGA that has uh, developed this uh, unique system in Europe in cooperation with the armed forces, CNES, and industry. To develop this system, we've had to really uh, take up a lot of uh, challenges. It's a real technical prowess, and we made progress step by step thanks to four demonstrators to test the orbits. The first demonstrators, Cerise and Clementine, showed that it was possible to detect radars from space. And the next one, Asa and Elisa, helped us develop new technologies that will enable Ceres to characterize and locate uh, accurately all types of transmitters. And that's how the Ceres program could be launched in 2015. This was done under the leadership of uh, DGA in partnership with the armed forces, CNES and Airbus. And Dallas. All these demonstrators validated all the technologies that are on embarked in Ceres today in an area like France. Hundreds of transmitters transmit simultaneously all types of radars, airport radars. For, uh... And I'm going to interrupt here as we come down to T minus five minutes and counting until tonight's launch here of the Vega rocket. They are uh, very excited about telling us more about why these satellites are so important for France and for Europe, uh, but uh, they don't show us the rocket. Arion Space, show us the rocket. Uh, we will listen to you talking if you show us the rocket, even in the corner. Uh, also, we are having some communication dropouts uh, of their stream, so bear with us with that. We hope those will clean up uh, as we count down the last five minutes until lift off if you're just joining us take a moment smash that like button it really does help us out and it's a free way of supporting us make sure you've engaged that subscribe button as well but tonight's liftoff uh launching three as you heard military satellites the third vega launch of 2021 it's really not a whole lot to talk about it's a, a pretty standard mission uh launching from the guiana space center in the french guiana uh and expected mission time just under 57 minutes 56 minutes 44 seconds from liftoff until uh payload separation 
Liftoff time again, 4.27 a.m. Eastern, 9.27 a.m. UTC, 4.27 p.m. Tokyo time. As you can see, creating that uh, configuration there uh, in preparation for the launch here this evening. Great call-outs in the chat from a, a few people uh, is that uh, the James Webb Space Telescope will be launching from this launch complex uh, on December uh, 18th is the current launch date, so we don't want to see any issues uh, occur on the pad here this evening as we count down the last four minutes uh, uh, until liftoff here this evening. We're going to take a quick moment and just try to reset our feed here and see if that helps uh, stabilize it at all, but uh, generally speaking, it's something going on on their end. Worst case scenario, we do also have the French feed uh, as well that we can pull up at least for that uh, live view here as we want to make sure that we don't miss that uh, liftoff attempt here. Uh, currently sitting now at T minus two minutes and counting uh, until liftoff here this evening. We're going to patch that screen in there. There we go. Back at that 90 second mark as always here on the launch pad we want to hear from you guys uh in the chat let's see a go no go for launch in the chat coming down to those last 90 seconds we'll see that audience behind them start to uh run out the doors to be able to see the launch here this evening as well uh coming down there uh for liftoff of the vega rocket carrying those three Satellites currently the board still green all the way across and let's listen in as we count down the final minute Then it makes it possible to prepare all the teams to the uh, most important uh, seconds uh, Zero minus one minute. So it's the period during which Everybody is very concentrated. So let's watch and uh, see the launch and uh, then uh, we'll talk together again we see vega on the uh, uh, launch pad in kuru 45 seconds before liftoff now it's always a very important uh, moment for the uh, teams and even for us on the uh, set now let's watch and listen Tous de DDO, attention pour le décompte final. Dix, neuf, huit, sept, six, cinq, quatre, trois, deux, un, stop. Allumage P80. Allumage P80 et décollage. Le guidage est nominal. Paramètres bord sont normaux. These are impressive images. I'm always impressed, and it's incredible to see that full daylight, no clouds today. It's absolutely wonderful. The Vega launch has been flying for 45 seconds. So acquisition by the Saint Jean station, and that's the 12th launch for the year for Ariane Space. A perfect launch so far. So we've just heard acquisition by Saint Jean. What does this mean? It's a telemetry station based in the west of Guyana, and as the launcher is in altitude thanks to the P80 uh, stage, we have acquisition by this station. Uh, so that we have contact with the launcher for the first phase of the flight. The P-80 is the first stage, okay. And in 40 seconds, it will be separated from the rest of the launcher. Yes, it's active for two minutes, roughly. And once it's finished its um, a boost and it's empty, we separate it. Okay, so it's very fast. Yes, it takes off very fast because we have 230 tons of thrust that's delivered by the P-80. And you have to look at this in relation to the weight of the launcher, which is uh, twice as low. So it's an impressive uh, thrust, and the launcher takes off very fast. 
Yeah, these were impressive uh, images. You can see here the separation of the P80. It's been confirmed. And we see that the Zephyro 23. Look at the P23, that the P80 that we can see. And now we have the Z23 that uh, continues this thrusting. Why several stages? Why several engines? Well, the principle is to get rid of dead weight when you don't need it anymore. So when a stage is over and has consumed all its propellants, if we keep it on board, we carry dead weight in space, in space and that's costly. So that's why we have different stages in a launcher so that we can get rid of dead weight as we go. The trajectory is nominal, says the DDO. It's incredible. After two minutes, we can still see uh, the launcher. Yes, it's normal. We are, we've gained an altitude, but uh, we're still a not far from Kourou in terms of uh, geography. But soon now, we will have acquisition from our next monitoring station in 20 seconds. OK, that's the end of thrust by Z23. That's coming to an end. And we will have the separation of the second stage. OK, we see the Jupiter room live. So next steps. So now we have roughly now in a few seconds, we have the separation of the third stage and the ignition of the Zephyro 9 engine. It's been confirmed and separation, jettisoning of the fairing. So these are computer-generated images, but say a few words about the fairing. Why a fairing? What's the role of a fairing? It protects the satellites when the launch goes across the atmosphere because well, it, this trajectory generates uh, acoustic forces and, and many different things. And by the way, it also protects uh, the satellites from the uh, natural environment in French Guiana. But once we are uh, across the atmosphere, uh, we can jettison the fairing because once again, that's dead weight. And as we're no longer in the atmospheric layer, there is no friction anymore, so the satellites no longer need to be protected. Absolutely, that's correct. DDO said nominal, everything's nominal, so everything's fine. Let's say a few words about what we talked briefly earlier. Tell us about the trajectory, which is slightly more eastward than usually. Why? Well, it has to do with the orbit that we target for the Ceres satellite. It's inclined with regards to the equator. So to target this plane, we have to launch slightly more eastward than in the other Vega missions where we uh, where we launch to the north but here we uh, launch slightly more to the east okay so that's a different trajectory leading to special measures everything's nominal yeah keep an eye on what the ddo is saying but the launcher is connected to the ground and to different telemetry bases and here we have one very special telemetry base which is on board a ship yes absolutely because of the trajectory because because we have to launch to the east at one stage we're flying over the north atlantic and we have no station available on ground to ensure contact with the launcher that's why for this mission we deployed like we did for other uh, launchers we deployed a boat-based uh, station. So that's a boat that's in a very specific location that's ready to acquire all the signals from the launcher and to maintain connection with the launcher during this phase across the Atlantic Ocean. So we can see that on the animation. Z9, Zephyro 9 separation has just been conf confirmed. OK, that's another very important phase. We have a 40, 50 minutes flight. Yeah, we have uh, 40 minutes left. We have a reorientation maneuver 
before we have the ignition of the upper stage. Okay, this upper stage contains our three passengers. Yes, absolutely. Reorientation maneuver. Why? Because for the uh, separation of the third stage, we give it an angle in order to make sure that there is a proper injection. So the uh, uh, orientation maneuver has just been confirmed. Can we talk about this AVUM stage? What does AVUM mean? And what is it? Well, it's a, a different stage. It's liquid propellant. So I ju we just had confirmation that it was ignited. So everything's fine. The AVM, you are connected directly live with Kuro. Yeah, maybe I should have said it before. OK, so the AVM is very specific because the propellants are liquid propellants. And we can ignite it at various moments. So it gives us lots of uh, flexibility so that we can target different orbits. And unlike the other stages, which you can't switch on and switch off, here we can. OK, we will talk about CNES, if you don't mind, Philip uh, Steininger. CNES celebrating its 60th anniversary. Absolutely. Next month, we will celebrate the 60th anniversary of CNES. OK, so it's not a secret. We met already, you and I, and we met with you at CNES in order to talk about the history of CNES and how it started working in the space industry. And if you're just joining us, welcome here to the launch pad. You're joining us for our live coverage of the launch of Vega, launching three military satellites into orbit for the French military. Unfortunately, uh, typical area on space not showing us much of the rocket or those simulations, uh, unfortunately. But we are nine minutes into flight. Everything progressing well after a very clean liftoff uh, from uh, the French Guiana, Guiana Space Center. Uh, carrying those three satellites into orbit. Payload separation is expected at T plus 56 minutes, 44 seconds. We do have a little bit of time until that. The next major event that we are expecting uh, to see is the uh, second ignition of the, third, of the fourth stage, uh, as we have seen already the completion of all three stages, and that fourth stage is now in orbit. It did have a small burn of the fourth stage that shut down. It's a liquid stage. And now we are waiting for that second ignition expected to take place at T plus 53 minutes, 29 seconds. So we're going to take some time, answer your guys' questions. So you can send those in in the chat. And we'll be answering those live as the evening progresses and hopefully get some more views, at least of that animation of the rocket. Arion Space, generally not the... Uh, the cleanest coverage, very much about selling uh, what they're doing. But uh, they still have some really profound rockets. And James Webb Space Telescope is one of the next, expected to launch December 18th from this launch complex. So very important to see that today went well in preparation for that. As always, let us know where you're watching from, too. We love welcoming you guys. We know people joining us all over the world. We saw earlier we had Florida, we had London, we had Europe. Uh, joining in prior to launch, so glad to have you all here this evening. B's asking how much CO2 are emitted during launch. That's a really great question that I don't have the answer for. Uh, it, it Obviously, it is a uh, large portion amount uh, released, but in comparison to the rest of the world, uh, ends up being quite uh, minimal. The Vega rocket uh, uses a four stage uh, is a four stage rocket uh, using uh, solid rocket fuel uh, for the, some of those stages here. Uh, the rocket stands 30 meters tall, diameter of three meters. First stage is a solid rocket fuel HTPB, followed by the second stage and third stage also. And then the upper stage uses UDMH and N204. 
Uh, so very different combinations than what we've heard in the past. Um, but uh, they are it's a proven rocket having 20 flights uh, in its history, 18 of those being successful, uh, and many launches planned with it up until 2026. Yeah, they, great call out there from uh, Eric. They uh, they are pollutant, but they don't submit CO2. So great call out uh, there. Keep sending in your questions, and we will be answering those live uh, with you here this evening. you're also new take a moment hit that like subscribe button it really does help us out uh it's also free to do uh coming up later in this month launches that you can look forward to we have the falcon 9 dart launch coming up on november 24th also on november 24th soyuz launching a new russian module to the international space station we've got two electrons coming up this month as well followed by another falcon 9 launch of starlink and another Soyuz carrying uh, a frigate mission. Also on the schedule, a Launcher 1 and Atlas 5 and a Proton mission as well. So lots of variety of rockets coming your way right here on the launch pad uh, over the next couple of weeks as we count down towards the holidays. Uh, if you guys haven't yet, take a moment, go on over and check out our Etsy shop. Uh, we've just released some brand new uh, international style t-shirts. Uh, as well as a couple holiday shirts. You can pick up your Hoppy Xmas or your Deck the Halls with Rockets t-shirts today uh, and get them in time for Christmas, as well as you can pick up our regular SpaceX, Starbase, NASA shirts. Uh, make really great Christmas gifts. So, what about watching this video? And so, tell us a few words about this uh, long journey. Yes, it was a long journey, but we can only pay tribute to the decision made by our politicians 60 years ago. They decided to turn France into a space nation, and within a few years, it became a reality, as in 1965, we launched our first French satellite, and this in total autonomy. And I'd like to underline the constant effort of politicians political authorities in favor of space, meaning that France is one of the key players in uh, in space at the moment. Okay, so that's your anniversary. There will be an anniversary for DGA as well. Coming back to you, Samuel Rogers, where do we stand? As we were watching the video, I think there was a notification that uh, we have uh, data from Santa Maria Station in the Esson. Yes, so we are in the north of Atlantic of the Atlantic Ocean. That's the end of the Avum phase. Uh, the Avum. Uh, engine or stage should be turned off in one minute. So yes, in less than one minute, we'll have the extinction of the Avum uh, stage. It will be reignited a bit later. OK, and what's coming up after? OK, so the switching off of the Avum has just been confirmed. I heard it. Confirmation, extinction of the Avum stage. OK. And after that, well, after that, we have a long phase taking us all the way above Australia. We'll have no stage ignited anymore. We'll be just flying all the way to Australia. Okay, the announcement that was made said that there is loss of contact with Santa Maria. Sorry, we are in, in the dark. Yes, we are, but it's all normal. It's nominal. That's something that we know. We expected that. The launcher is going to follow its trajectory, and it will continue taking measurements, recording various parameters, but instead of sending the signal to ground stations, this is stored on board, and this will be collected by the next station, which will be New Norcia in Australia. That's when we will collect all this data. So we just have to wait 
uh, and wait till the time we are above Australia in 10 minutes. Okay, so we talked about the 60th anniversary of CNES, and this year there is another anniversary, that's DGA. We also have a short uh, newsreel, and then we will come back to you for this next stage. And if you're just joining us, welcome here to our live launch coverage of Vega launching three CERES uh, satellites into orbit. Uh, we've seen that first burn complete in orbit, and the next one expected to take place at T plus 53 minutes, 29 seconds, or about 35 minutes from now. Uh, and will be followed by payload deployment just three minutes later. So a little bit more time to go. Uh, but uh, I know lots of people saying, show more rocket. Uh, I agree. Uh, let uh, Arion Space know that you guys want to see the rocket more. But we do need to keep in mind, uh, we are very blessed from what we are used to seeing with SpaceX and some of the other rocket agencies. They don't have to show us anything. They don't even actually technically have to do a public live stream, but they do. But uh, I do agree. It would be nice to at least see that animation, maybe split screen it even. If they want to do all this other stuff, I would accept that as well. But uh, I definitely agree. Take a moment, engage that like, subscribe button. It helps us out. Keep sending in questions. But we're going to keep listening in uh, to what they're saying as we await payload deployment at T plus 56 minutes and 44 seconds. Stay with us. This architect, we manage all major, or they manage all major programs, except they don't build houses, but uh, fighter aircraft, uh, ships, uh, nuclear submarines, etc. And they provide a connection between the military who say, I need a satellite, an aircraft, a ship, and the industries that build them. So very often, uh, that's uh, with CNES, uh, like today, of course, uh, big links with CNES. Uh, of course, DGA uh, collects all the military requirements and listens to the forces about what they want to do in the field, which, what type of uh, armaments, and then they draft specifications, which is what uh, industry is going to manufacture. And then they will work with uh, big industrial groups and SMEs as well, and uh, write the contract, negotiate, say what they need, and uh, obtain the equipment before delivering it to the armed forces. So it's a collaboration between the military, the soldiers who uh, wage war, and industries that uh, make the equipment. So DJ is in Ballard, in Paris, but also in many test centers. We have about 10 test centers with highly qualified engineers that work in these test centers. If you go to know close to Paris, there are people who uh, draw the propellers of our nuclear submarines in Angers. People test new armored vehicles on uh, special tracks to make sure that the equipment that will then be used by the soldiers in operations uh, meets its performances. And you have a specialized center in Toulouse as well, uh, absolutely specialized in uh, uh, airspace uh, uh, now. Why Toulouse? I know why, because, uh, well, there are many of you working with space well. Toulouse is the beating heart of the uh, space uh, business, uh, and we decided to locate the Space Command in Toulouse when we decided to set up this uh, uh, defense space strategy. We know that satellites are important for this strategy. What we haven't said is that space is becoming a conflict area nowadays. Spies are trying to listen to our satellites. There are uh, firings against satellites that create debris and that happened very recently. Uh, yesterday, there was maybe a Russian uh, uh, firing uh, destroying a satellite. So it's very uh, uh, topical. So 
space is becoming a field of conflicts, and we need to prepare to wage war in space. That's why we have prepared a uh, space defense strategy, which includes uh, developing equipment, uh, nanosatellites, etc. But also, there is an operational aspect. How do you get organized to wage war in space? So that's why we've uh, set up a, a space uh, command that will be located in Toulouse and coordinate with CNES. There is Thales as well and many SMEs, and uh, there will be uh, a coordination uh, there. And uh, it's Toulouse uh, where all this is happening. That's why it was so important for us to locate it there. So uh, I s met you at CNES in Paris, but you're also based in Toulouse. Can you explain the role of CNES? You don't only work for uh, defense, uh, but you've had a long collaboration with them. Yes, CNES is a uh, public uh, establishment with an industrial and commercial uh, uh, aspect, and uh, its role is to uh, propose space policies to the government, and once it's approved by the government, CNES implements this space policy, which uh, leads us to having many activities, scientific ones, in defense activities, but also special uh, s space applications as well uh, that take us very far, and that's why CNES is under the uh, leadership of different uh, ministries, the one in charge of space, in charge of research, and the one in charge of defense, the Ministry of the Armed Forces, which shows a very wide uh, uh, scope of activities. So what is uh, each of these organizations' role? Is there a uh, uh, manager? Are you involved in operational matters? Yes, CNES has three main areas of intervention for the benefit of, of uh, defense. The first one is uh, that we uh, conduct major space military programs. Uh, second one is preparation of the future. The third one is more operational oriented. It's uh, the surveillance of space uh, and uh, uh, that's uh, space operations. And the fifth one is to provide support uh, to the armed forces to help them uh, ramp up their capabilities in the field of space. Because as was mentioned before, we've uh, started developing a new space strategy in uh, 2019 in the field of defense. The first four areas I've mentioned are traditional uh, uh, CNES serving uh, uh, defense. But the fifth one is uh, newer to help uh, set up this uh, space defense strategy. Now, regarding today's mission, uh, CNES is uh, in charge of an important uh, mission uh, for Ceres, which is the formation flight. That's important. Yes, it's important for us. Yes. Uh, well, there are three satellites flying in formation, but once we've uh, designed and developed the uh, equipment in partnership with the Ministry of the Armed Forces at NES, we need to guide these satellites. Uh, till now, it was NES operators that did it, but now we want military uh, men to also guide these satellites because they will be involved in military missions. So it's a joint mission. And again, we thank NES uh, to help the Ministry of the Armed Forces in this activity. But in the future, the Ceres satellites will be uh, led by mixed uh, teams. And that's a very interesting idea. You don't imagine that you need to uh, pilot satellites. Uh, they fly in formation. We're going to uh, watch a video to understand uh, how these three satellites are going to fly in formation and understand better in this video. It's a major development on which the CNES engineers have been working for many years to multiply the performances, push the limits. It was a big challenge because the future of many uh, Earth orbit missions and also more remote orbits are based on formation flight. In Toulouse, Paula and Geraldine are heading the departments that have uh, provided this technical development. Formation flight involve a number of satellites that are flying at a very very close distance. Now, we can uh, make a difference between different formation flights. Some of them uh, involve a series of satellites that can have different designs that are scattered on the same orbit, uh, but not close. It's called a trade. For Ceres, you have three satellites flying on two different orbital plans, and that uh, constitute a specific geometry triangle that you need to maintain throughout the mission. You could mix up formation and constellation 
constellation. The difference is that the constellation involves a series of satellites that cover uh, the Earth at a, a given moment. In a formation, a flight, you have a local coverage of the Earth at a given time. Satellites are the last part of a very uh, wide project that started with the uh, orbiting of the first demonstrator of Ceres. Uh, it was launched in 2004 and deorbited in 2010. CNES uh, for formation flights uh, started studying that a long time ago with uh, research and technology studies, and that led to the first project, the ESA Beehive project, the formation of four microsats in the Myriad uh, series. 120 kilos. Uh, it was simple uh, formation with distances of a few hundreds of kilometers. It was a precursor of Ceres and the beginning of formation flights. This adventure is continuing in 2011 with ELISA. ELISA was uh, the next demonstrator uh, before Ceres. It was also a formation of four myriads, but uh, the formation flight was a bit closer more accurate. We are in the process of deorbiting them because their big brother, Ceres, is now arriving. It was a demonstrator that was very useful for formation flights and uh, keeping these uh, in uh, Uh, its uh, station. It was very good for the Ceres mission, but also to test the instruments that showed their very good uh, capacities. What was important in ESA and ELISA, uh, the precursors of Ceres, uh, was the ability to demonstrate the performances, of course, uh, the uh, life cycle, uh, and what uh, we could achieve with uh, such a formation. These two uh, demonstrators made it possible to strengthen up the requirements of the Ceres program in terms of formation flight. The satellites are now closer, and the geometry is maintained in a more accurate way. Flying satellites in formation is a very difficult exercise, and it is the result of long years of R&D work by the CNES engineers. The challenge uh, that Ceres uh, is posing after the two demonstrators, Esa and Elisa, are as follows. We could ask ourselves why three satellites. We saw uh, that uh, a formation is uh, very uh, interesting, especially Especially for electromagnetic intelligence, because it locates And if you're just joining us, welcome here to our live launch coverage of this, uh, tonight's Vega rocket uh, from Arion Space. I uh, have a bit of a signal issue coming in from their feeds here, even though that we're having a stable feed, but. Uh, Launch was successful uh, out of the French Guiana. We are still 25 minutes away from the expected liftoff time here this evening. But uh, I think with the way that their feeds are going, we'll see if they stabilize here one more time. Uh, and if they don't, we will probably wrap it up from there. But we'll give them one more chance, see how their feed stabilizes. And if not, we'll conclude for the evening. But take a moment, hit that like, subscribe. Now let's continue listening in. But let's refocus on this fo formation flight. Uh, so, Philip, sorry, but we're talking about autonomous cars today, and all of a sudden, everything, everybody thinks it's amazing to have satellites flying in formation. Why is it complex? Well, before it's complex, it's a must. This Ceres system is going to be able to locate an electromagnetic radar on the surface of the Earth thanks to a triangulation technique. So each of these satellites will receive electromagnetic waves from the ground with a small gap in time and
by a triangulation, they will calculate the positioning on the Earth. So the outcome of the measurement will be all the more accurate when uh, we can maintain the formation. And this is where CNES engineers are very important indeed, because for systems like that, keeping the formation flight is not in a an easy task. In the low orbit, there are many different parameters that prevent uh, a satellite from keeping its injection trajectory. What kind of parameters? Well, the influence of the moon, of the planets, of the sun, of residual friction coefficients, and the shape of the Earth, which is not a perfect sphere, and possibly avoidance maneuvers that we have to carry out in order to avoid debris or other orbital stations, which could be on our trajectory. Yes, and uh, we just heard about a um, missile being shot in space, so we have to avoid collisions. Absolutely. So we will have to readjust this uh, formation to make sure that the calculated uh, geometry is maintained. And that's technically difficult, and I want to insist on the efficacy that needs to be uh, present at all time, because each time we will use the propulsion system of each individual satellite, so we will use fuel, and this has an impact on the overall life of the system. So the efficiency of these maneuvers is obviously of crucial importance. So once again, uh, what's important in satellite is the fuel that satellites have on board. We can't refill satellites when they are in orbit, so we have to have a very accurate piloting of these satellites. Okay, so we said it's triangulation. It's a bit like on the ground when you try and geolocate a, a mobile phone. But on, oper from an operational perspective, can you tell us more? Well, I can't really tell you more because that's classified, but a, a Ceres satellite looks over a 3,000 square kilometers area on the Earth. And when we receive an, an emission, we have to define where the sensor is, and that's the role of the two other satellites. We have sensors at the moment. To, we have planes that uh, give us intelligence. We have buildings that are listening in with big ears. But the as with these satellites, well, first, they are not easy to detect. We'd need an enemy power to be able to monitor space and see that the satellites are flying above their um, country. And the other intelligence devices are limited in range of action because there are national borders which we cannot violate. But space belongs to everybody, so we can go there and we can watch the entire planet with these satellites, and that's uh, totally new. So concretely speaking, uh, can, if you identify a ship in the middle of the ocean from space, you know it's a military craft, but you don't know its nationality. You're telling me that with Ceres, you will be able to tell the, the nationality of the ship. Yes, absolutely, because a, a ship has telecommunication equipment on board. They emit a specific noise, a bit like if you were listening to a whale and underwater, whale A is going to make uh, noises which are going to be different from uh, uh, whale B. It's uh, what we see with submarines. We have people, experts in recognizing the noise made by uh, all the ships. Yes, we have a huge library of all the characteristics and features of radio stations and radars in the world. And that uh, makes it possible for us to say, okay, this ship is this nationality. Okay, that's what's going on in space. Now let's talk about the ground segment.
A few weeks ago, at CNES in Toulouse, this is the room where we had a dress rehearsal, a very important one for the CRS program. This is the main control room for the uh, launcher. It's a very important room. It's only used for the satellite mission, for placing the uh, satellite in position. So this room is used to test the ground segment and to check the organization before the launch. When the space segment is composed with satellites in space, the ground segment covers all the means that are needed on ground. I'm in charge of the ground segment for the Ceres mission. This includes the control room so that we have visibility over the satellites. It also includes the orbitography center, which computes the positioning of the satellites, and also the collision analysis center that uh, triggers an alert if there is a risk of collision with other space debris. CNES is in charge of the ground segment part for the Ceres satellites. CNES was involved right from the beginning to define the uh, control ground segment and were in charge of positioning the satellites. When you launch a satellite, it's placed uh, on an orbit by the launcher, and then CNES teams have to take it on its final positioning so that it can carry out its mission. And then, during the entire life of the satellite, we're in charge of monitoring the operation of the satellite to maintain its uh, operational status all the way till deorbiting. De all this is operated by the Space Command, which is in charge of programming the satellite and collecting its data. Over the last few weeks, system tests, including dress rehearsals, have been quite numerous at NET. You need to understand that we have various dress rehearsals which are carried out during the development of the project. The dress rehearsal is kind of a practice run for the teams to make sure that they are ready for the launch date. And in one of these rehearsals, we inject anomalies on the satellites or on the ground segment. We simulate problems to make sure that people know how they should react to such and such anomaly and carry out the proper actions, carry out the right analysis in order to ensure the proper positioning of the satellite. So these dress rehearsals are very important for CERES because this program uh, has many challenges for the teams. Yes, it's a multi-satellite mission, so we had to have a control room that was capable of managing three satellites in a coordinated fashion. They are interdependent. They fly information. It's also a very touching moment for engineers who develop these systems. Yes, we get involved in the project many years before the launch, so it's a bit of a stress, but it's also very moving. It's a great satisfaction to see the concrete achievement of everything we've done for many years. OK, on board, everything went fine. All the procedures were run smoothly. Once the rehearsals uh, are completed, the, the teams expect, uh, await for the launch with great impatience. What's um, very significant is the first acquisition. This is where we check the satellite and its status, make sure that all the equipment is functional. And once the satellite is in nominal position, we bring it from its injection orbit to the target orbit where it's going to carry out its mission. And that's for a few months after the launch. That's crucial before we can hand over the satellite, a fully operational satellite to the armed forces. Once all this has been validated by CNES teams, the mission of CERES, operated by the Space High Command, will start. The leader of the CERES program is very dear to Patrick Lelouz-Rand. CERES is a program for defense. It includes a large number of innovations, 20 years of work 
and 20 years of research. CNES is a partner of the Ministry of Defense and has been for many years. And it's uh, great to be able to work in a national framework and to contribute uh, for the benefit of the Ministry of Defense. Philip Steininger will talk about the work of our of your ground teams. But just before that, we have a replay of the liftoff. Uh, so it was quite impressive. We have a brilliant sky. Let's take a look at the liftoff that took place 41 minutes and 46 seconds ago in Kourou, in French Guiana. That was at 6 o'clock in the morning in French Guiana. And they tell me that we have to thank CNES for these beautiful images. I think I know why. It's because it's um, the CSG, the Guiana Space Center, is operated by CNES. And these images are transmitted by the Guiana Space Center, therefore by CNES. No. Guiana Space Center, based in Kourou, from which we had uh, the Vega launch earlier, is technically and financially operated by CNES, and CNES coordinates all the launch preparations and also is also in charge of preparing the satellite. So it's thanks to you that you have these beautiful images. Well, for the Jupiter room, yes, you're right, it's managed by our colleagues at CNES. Okay. Beautiful images and a cloudless uh, sky. Yeah, that's uh, exceptional. It's a great privilege. OK, let's, I, 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 I love these, this video, but let's come back to what's going on uh, on the ground. CNES is a partner for the designing of the CERES program, but they're also involved in operating the, the satellite. So how many people were involved and will continue to be involved in the CERES program? This is what I was uh, saying before when I talked about the uh, CNES missions for the Ministry of Defense. And CERES is a major uh, program. And since we've had uh, military satellites, they've been operated by CNES and from the Toulouse center of CNES when we talk about low Earth orbits, those are having an intelligence mission. But things are going to change, and as was said, the armies will take over, and CNES is currently training uh, military operators. Some of them are already operational and are included in joint uh, teams for special operations. These uh, joint teams uh, include CNES uh, engineers and uh, military personnel. So you'll work in cooperation. Absolutely. And to be more precise, at the moment, we are making, we are working a lot on the CERES program. So we have 150 people involved in the launch operation today. So we have our friends in Kourou, whom you can see on the screen, but also engineers who worked and developed the CERES program. People have a very accurate knowledge of the system and can contribute their expertise when need be. Uh, those who uh, deploy the global network of telemetry stations so that we can have a dialogue with the satellites. That uh, was shown in, in, the, in the video we just saw about the ground segment. Then you have specialists in orbitography and in-flight maneuvers. OK, so many teams each having a specific role. Absolutely each having a specific role to play. And then we have our teams based in Kourou. Sorry, we have some things happening in the flight. And uh, within a few minutes, we should uh, have visibility again. That's very important. Um, DGA, Hervé Grandjean, we're talking about public stakeholders, but uh, public stakeholders are working with private stakeholders. Yes, in France, our defense industry is very powerful, very innovative, very well structured, many jobs in the in the, the industry of defense and in a program like the CERES program. 
weakness cannot work alone. So we find support from the industry. Who? Airbus, Thales, they build the payload. So the intelligence in the satellite that's going to listen and analyze the electromagnetic data and lots and lots of small and medium-sized companies who are subcontractors to the prime contractors Airbus and Thales. Okay, we talked to Airbus Defense and Space in Toulouse and we met with Jean-Marc Nastre. Listen to this interview. A few days ago, one of our journalists uh, went to Toulouse at Airbus Defence and Space to interview Mr. Naz, the executive uh, vice president of the French uh, industry. Okay, I'm Jean-Marc Naz. Uh, welcome. I'm in charge of space activity at Airbus. Serra's constellation it follows ELISA and S1 demonstrators. These are electromagnetic intelligence uh, satellites. It's very important for the armed forces. It's very important because that's the achievement of many years of work by men and women who contributed to this program. Today you're in Toulouse in the Palais site and for more than 30 years we've been working for the armed forces with military satellites. Since then the company has worked permanently as a prime contractor for all military satellites at the service of the armed forces. In optics with the SAMRO and ELIOS and then CSO satellites that were launched recently and will continue launching them next year, then the telecommunication with Syracuse and electromagnetic field with uh, S1, ELISA and now Ceres. So France is currently at the same level as all of the big players in space in the world, but it's because our investment in military space has never been reduced. What are the main field of uh, defense requirements? Well, the def defense requirements change at all times. Time. And at the moment, no one can envisage any outside operations without space capabilities, which are key for the operation of our armed forces. So in optics, we started with ELIOS. CSO was launched uh, in autumn and will be launched next year. The Minister for the, uh, of Defense uh, already made an announcement for the optics satellite. We see the investments made by the Defense Ministry in the field of space, but the industry is also uh, ready to invest and to provide additional capability. After the Spot Pleiad satellite that were paid for by the French government, we invested along with uh, uh, CNES for the CO3D um, constellation. We work on the OneWeb satellite with the operator. And by doing that, we gained expertise in the field of constellations. And now we are a key player uh, with regards to the need that defense may have for low latency communication uh, capabilities. We are a specialist in uh, defense satellites today, and we can now play a big role alongside with uh, major nations in the world. Why is this important for the French industry? Well, in space, we have satellites that are getting very close to our own satellite, either to listen to them or to look at them. So we see that there is a um, let's say, unfriendly activity going on. The ARES program launched by our minister in 2019 is a major program to protect our assets in space, protect our assets on the ground, because our ground segments are potential targets as well. And we want to make sure that the, the means of France are always available when we need them. Of, of course, Airbus will be alongside the ministry for that. So why is uh, cybersecurity a major topic. Well, cybersecurity is a major topic for everyone, for you, for me, with your laptop or your phone. But just imagine somebody takes control of one of our satellites, sends us wrong information, or destroys our satellite. Cyber criminality has no limits. So, of course, we do invest a lot on this topic. And right from the inception, our satellites are designed to be protecting against cyber criminality, both on the space 
and on the ground segment. More than 15% of our IT uh, budget is dedicated to the uh, protection of our assets against cyber criminality. But cyber protection has no limits, and we will always be working with our partners to make sure that uh, Airbus assets are the best protected in the world. Thank you so much. While we were watching this uh, report, a very important step uh, has taken place back to visibility and acquisition uh, by New Norcia. We have reached uh, the New Norcia station in Australia. The uh, mission uh, director just confirmed acquisition by New Norcia, and we are now downloading all the data stored on board. It so we were in the dark, then we are collecting all the data on board. Now they are collected, they are being analyzed right now, and we uh, can know whether the trajectory was the right one. This is already confirmed. We are at the right place with the right altitude. Everybody, everything is running smoothly. Now, what are the next steps? Uh, back to the mission. What are the next steps? We would think everything is done now, but it's not true. There are still many important steps. Yes, there are a few steps that remain. We were in a mode where there was a very slight rotation around the longitudinal axis of the launcher, the barbecue mode. We call that barbecue mode to spread the, the uh, sun rays everywhere. Why barbecue? Uh, well, the idea is not uh, to, to burn the, uh, the uh, satellites. Uh, like when you roast meat. So we are stopping the barbecue mode. That's what you're seeing in the animation on the screen. And we reorient uh, the launcher to reignite for the second time the avum uh, to uh, guarantee the orbit before a separation of the satellites, which is the step everybody is waiting for. Do we have time for a few words about the avum? Yes, and its specificities. What are the main characteristics of this upper stage that uh, hosts uh, three satellites. We see on the screen that uh, it's uh, the black part above uh, the uh, avum that carries the three satellites. It's a structure of the Ceres mission with two purposes. First, fit the three satellites in the fairing. It's a very small space. We saw on the integration videos that this is difficult to do. And then uh, separate the satellites, uh, the three satellites simultaneously, and then progressively uh, remove them from one another. It's a very important challenge. So from a technical standpoint, develop this smart structure that can simultaneously separate the three satellites was a challenge. It's called the clip, and it's a mechanical separation. There is, there was propulsion, and then there will be a mechanical separation with springs, or is that too uh, commonplace? Now, we've had confirmation of the second ignition of the AVUM live. But to answer your question, yes, we are releasing the satellites and pushing them. And, and we control the thrust uh, thanks to springs that are adjusted specifically for that. We're going to see the separation in a few minutes. But before that, uh, we are going to hand over to uh, Daniel Andre, who is the launcher's uh, director at ESA. Freedom of action in space requires independent access. Independent access from uh, the European territory is uh, essential, in particular for, for security and defense payloads, whether we are dealing with recognition, intelligence, navigation, and positioning, or secure telecommunications. It is an essential contribution to the uh, geopolitics and strategy of the European continent. Tonight, we're launching Ceres on board Vega. It is a unique opportunity to demonstrate once again how much Vega and Ariane contribute to the uh, capacity of Europe to take autonomous action in space. Immediately after the launch, we'll uh, focus on the qualification flight of Vega C. Vega C, at a similar cost as Vega, will make 
make it possible to carry payloads up to 2.3 tons and to double the volume in the fairing. So I'm waiting impatiently for the technical qualifications to be successful to start the flight campaign and launch Vigasi to new orbits, which will be possible six months approximately after uh, this current uh, uh, launch. So we'll meet again in the spring 2022. Samuel Rogers, uh, you just gave me an interesting information. So the second avon boost was shut down. We've had confirmation of that. What is the next step? Next step, well, in, in a few, in one minute, a few orientation maneuvers before separation of the three Ceres satellites here. Here we are seeing uh, 3D images, but they represent the actual orientations. And we're listening to the DDO uh, making uh, comments on this particular maneuver. Well, I forgot something that's very wrong. Well, uh, uh, Pépin Antoine Guillaume is commenting all these crucial steps and guidance. us in this mission, telling us where you see very often, and you see the relief, the releasing of all the pressure and tensions and stress, so maybe we want to talk to them now. We don't know really whether we can talk to them now because they want to party and celebrate. All the teams are very happy. Uh, it's mission successful. successful. Well, for those of you still here with that, we have payload deployment. Uh, no animation or anything of it, just suddenly, oh, they're happy and uh, it's good to go. So uh, a very interesting coverage tonight from Arion Space of tonight's uh, Vega launch, but we're going to wrap up our stream there. Uh, three new satellites up in orbit this evening. Thanks for those that have stuck out with us here tonight. I know it was a later evening, but we're glad to have you all here with us as always make sure you've engaged that like subscribe button we got many many launches coming up the next launch expected is electron which was delayed another 24 hours now until the 17th so make sure that you have gone over to that stream hit set reminder as we keep updating that with the new t0 but for now here this is zach with the launch pad signing off we will see you soon have a great night everyone